Um, so this question is, what is the absolute priority rule? And you mentioned this rule before, but I think, but maybe you can go into a little bit more about what it what it means. Yeah. So, and it means two very different things, dependent on if you're in traditional Chapter Eleven or sub Chapter Five, Chapter Eleven. Um, what what Congress did with sub in creating sub Chapter Five was again, um, I mean, it was really nothing short of ama amazing. Um, and in, in the sense that in what it did to the absolute priority rule with respect to general unsecured creditors. But let's see if we can get there. And let me, for, you know, let me address this slide uh, in the context of a traditional chapter 11. The absolute priority rule um, basically stands for the proposition that um, junior creditors and equity interests cannot take anything under a plan um, until the class above them gets paid in full, unless the junior classes agree to that different treatment. I think if you read all the words on the slide, that's what the slide will say. Um, I like to think of it as, oh, and that's this is on the slide too in sub bullet one, rungs on a ladder, right? And the highest cl uh, class leaving secured claims over here. But in terms of once you've taken care of your, your, your secured claims, you, you have value left to distribute uh, either in the form of cash if the, if the case is liquidating or in the form of um, claims and equity interest if the, if the case is reorganizing, uh, the claims will be paid in the future pursuant to the plan. Um, and, and, and so you have these rungs on the ladder and administrative claims, which are uh, basically all of the expenses of the chapter 11 case, including professional fees, that's the highest um, you know, priority. I won't make a joke about it, it's too easy of a target about lawyers writing the law, right? <laughs> um, lawyers make sure they get paid. <laughs> after the administrative priority claims come other priority claims. And there's a bankruptcy code sections that governs what are these claims and what is their priority. Uh, first, second priority after administrative, second priority is to this, third priority is this, fourth priority is this, fifth priority is this. If you look at the code actually, um, because the bankruptcy code, the 20 second frolic and detour, the code section on priorities is not an 11, it's in, um, it's in uh, uh, three, I guess, Ch chapter, I think it's in chapter three. Um, it's in one, three or five, three. Anyway, it's a rule of general applicability. It applies to chapter seven and 11. It applies to Joe, you know, Joe Schmo on the street and it applies to, you know, any billion dollar company that files. So the very first priority, if you look at the code is has nothing to do with corporate America. It's like some kind of a personal claim, you know, that only a person would have against her or him. But for our purposes, uh, administrative claims come first, other priorities, and then uh, general unsecured claims, then any unsecured claims that have been subordinated, and then equity interests, and of course, you know, preferred classes ahead of common. And so the point is that, um, and often what happens is, uh, you know, the, there won't be enough to pay um, unsecured creditors in full. And if the unsecured class doesn't agree otherwise, that means equity gets nothing. Um, if that was what often happened, then um, companies might be less inclined to file Chapter 11. Uh, but there are um, there are exceptions, and there are you know you can negotiate a different result. And the, the main exception, uh, it's the, the term is in the last line of the last bullet point. It's the new value exception, um, and so there are ways that um, to, to get to 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 keep your uh, to get a distribution, notwithstanding the fact that it's not in absolute priority, the order of absolute priority. Uh, a whole different topic would be the, co the topic of gifting. Uh, can a cl senior class simply say, I could have gotten everything, but I'm going to give some of my distribution to the class, two classes below me. The middle class, well, the Jackson, you can't do that. The senior class will say, sure, I can. It's my money. You wouldn't have gotten it anyway. You would not have gotten it anyway. And then the middle class in between will say, you can't do it. And case law goes, um, you know, different different ways on that. And, and by the way, uh, a later slide, if we get to it, 
um, asks, well, how do you pick venue? How do you decide where to file? Well, you, you study, you think about what legal issues may be very important. Then you figure out, have these legal issues been decided differently in Delaware versus Texas versus Chicago versus New York? And you try to file where the legal issues tend are likely to come out the way you want them to come out.